Okay, exciting day today. I've been waiting for this. This has arrived. I haven't even opened it. Just taken off the outer cover. And uh, that's what it is. It's a Carperide Android Auto screen for a motorbike. I've been waiting for this. So um, can't wait to try this out and see how it goes. I'll do a short little unboxing thing just to have a look inside. But anyway, let me explain why why I want this and why I want to give it a go. I've got a, I've got a Garmin XT, a Zumo XT, one of these. Um, and whilst it's a great thing and I really enjoy it, it's it has some flaws. Um, I actually sold mine when I sold my GS and then because I missed it, I got it again. And the reason why I got it again is because of the touchscreen nature of it. It is brilliant with touchscreen. Right. Um, doesn't matter what glove you wear. Doesn't have to be a display glove. It just works and it just does what it's supposed to do. Um, the only problem with these is that you're locked into the Garmin user experience, um, and it's pretty good. I won't lie, um, but it just the mapping and the traffic and the it just doesn't compare to the flexibility you get off Android or um, iPhone device uh, apps it just it just doesn't compare um, and can be a little bit clunky um, and uh, I just I just found that um, I was frustrated I would put it on I'd be using it for the journey and then it, it would redirect and pick some alternative routes that I wasn't really sure were the best routes and so I would end up pulling out my Google map and sticking my Google maps um, on my phone on the handlebar and uh, and then the Google navigation proved to be better and more flexible. Now, I've tried with other things other than Google Maps. I've tried Waze. I've tried um, uh, uh, Osmand, which is quite good. I've tried, oh, I've tried 10, 15 different ones. I'll list the names of all the ones I've tried. And they are better. Some have pros, some have cons. But the problem, um, so, so that's the problem with the Zuma. You're locked into that sort of ecosystem, and it's quite limited. Um, and I also, you know, I would like to have the flexibility of my phone, being able to play music through it. And I know you can do it through the Zumo, but it, it kind of gets tied up and confused a little bit when you've got a helmet and a phone and the GPS and I've got a GoPro. Um, and so I end up reverting to this half the time and um, I end up being frustrated. Um, so this is the promise of something that might work um, and I've been looking at all the different options online There's heaps of them. There's a lot of cheap cheap ones um, and then there's the more expensive ones uh, The more expensive ones are not that far off the price of a Zumo XT um, Approaching it and the cheap ones are like really really cheap and they have terrible reviews um, And they you know, I've watched so many YouTube reviews where they they knock the things but one that that sort of consistently seems to get quite good reviews is this Carper Ride, and um, I've gone with the W501, not the W701, because I want a small, I want a small interface, sort of same size as the XT. Uh, it works well on my Ninja, and it will be fairly relocatable. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I know the downsides of it. Um, you can't take it off. Okay, so it's tied to the bike, which is a bit of an irritation if you want to move it from bike to bike. So I'm aware of that. Um, and there's one or two other little things that, that might be annoying. So the point of this exercise was to try it out and just see. Um, and if I don't, if I do like it and it works, I'll keep it and I'll sell the Zumo. If I don't like it, I will sell this on um, and just see. Anyway, uh, let's see how we go. Unboxing. Okay, always have coffee on the standby when you're unboxing. Mm. Mm. I do love my coffee machine. Okay, let's have a look. So, oh, okay. So it comes with a ball joint already built in with four screws. So that's how you would take it on and off. But Oh, okay. That's quite cool. It's actually only got a short lead before you can unscrew the power. So it's not that difficult to move. You literally undo the mount and then just undo that and you can move it to another motorcycle. So that's better than I thought. That's cool. 
in terms of build quality, it's quite light. There's nothing wrong with it. It's got a power button on this side, and then looks like in order to put an SD card in, you'd have to have two screws and put it into that side. Nothing on the back, and nothing underneath. So effectively no buttons at all, like some of the others have got buttons as well. This doesn't. And it comes with a little hood. Now I'm not sure if I'll keep the hood on. I think it's removable, so it's up to you whether you want to keep the hood or not. I quite like it. It's obviously for shade. Um, Okay, and then let's just before we look at the rest of it, how does it compare to my Garmin in terms of size? Uh, here's the Garmin. I wanted to um, have the Garmin on just so we could see the brightness. Of course, it immediately goes dim when you unplug it. So the Garmin XT, do you know they're identical sizes? And what's also interesting, oh no, they're not. Okay, so it's slightly smaller than the Garmin horizontally but it's the same size vertically and it's the same shape it's got the square and then a clipped off area on each side so that's an interesting copy I suppose that they've made cool that looks to be oh it's a USB power supply so instead of going straight to the battery or to a switch power supply you can also run it off USB that's actually quite handy uh, and then it's got the mount it's actually very heavy, surprisingly buff. I mean, I have other solutions for this. I already have these things on my bikes, so I don't need this. Um, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually very nice. Pretty straightforward. It's pretty much exactly what I've got on my bike um, that I was using for my 3D, 3D camera. Okay, and then uh, two spare fuses. I'm assuming there's a fuse in here. If not, then you've got one. Yep, so you get three fuses. Interesting. And a little, 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 little manual. I'm dying to try it. I think I'm going to have to give it a go quickly just to see. All right, I, I kind of know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm going to follow the instructions as per the manual just, just to see if the manual is accurate. So what it says is enter Bluetooth. All right, so Bluetooth is, it's through settings, Bluetooth, yes. Um, and then make it discoverable, it is. Discover list, searching. I presume I now just go onto my phone and I'll go to Bluetooth. And there it is, car per ride, and it's got a number. So it's got two, it's got the BT transmission, which is the audio, and then the car per ride there, which is Android Auto. Dink, pair, yes, done. Okay, that was easy. Welcome to Android Auto, manage, let's just say okay. Well, turn on Bluetooth and pair with your phone, okay. Boom, just look at that, there's my house. <gasps> Shouldn't. System of a down, no apologies, I love the music. Uh, okay, well that was easy. So that goes in my pockets and I forget about it. So I'm gonna disconnect my edge. Okay, so the edge is no, disconnected. phone disconnected, I heard it do that. Okay, so I'm connected to copyright. Now, as I understand it, this thing now talks to my headset. So let's go and do that. Okay. Exit. Audio output. BT trance, search. So now I need to make it discoverable. So I hold this down. Phone pairing. Phone pairing. No. GPS pairing. GPS pairing. That's what I want. Let's see if we can find it. There it is. So now we connect. Connect. GPS connected. GPS connected. Okay. So, all right. So now I've got this set up. I've got, I've got um, my helmet talking to the unit, and the unit is talking to my phone via CarPlay. So, um, okay. That's as easy as it is. Let's see if that works. I'm going to put my helmet on and just see if I can play music to start something simple. Okay, let's see what happens. Well, first of all, let me just try something. Okay, Google. 
no ways that started right away I just said and there it's, it's transcribing so that's cool let's say um, okay Google navigate to work Look at that. <laughs> Alright, and I'm going through my cardo, which is awesome. Okay, Google. Cancel navigation. Okay, done. Stopping navigation. Excellent. So that worked. Let me just try some other apps. So I've got a couple of app shortcuts at the bottom. Uh, let me go here. So let's see what we've got. Game snacks. Maps, messages. There's Osmand. Let's see if Osmand works. I do like Osman because it gives you a lot more flexibility in what you can see on the screen. Okay, so that works well. Let's uh, let's go back to Ma Google Maps. It's working as well. Music. Let's see if the music plays. Whoa, okay. A little bit loud. Alrighty, I'm feeling quite buoyant. What's happening here? Okay, they are fighting with each other a little bit, so I need to actually just disconnect everything here. You see, I'm trying to swipe down. I'm trying to treat it like like a, a phone already. I'm just going to turn off everything. So, not connected. Okay, finally here is the, two, the true test, is the gloves. So, I just want to show you the experience difference. Um, on my Zuma XT, you can see it's, uh, it's, very, it's very receptive to any, any glove. Uh, the buttons work nice, they're nice and big, everything works, okay, on this particular glove. Over here, it's less exciting, to be honest. I'm not seeing any movement at all. So that's that's quite disappointing. And that was the one thing I liked about the Zuma. So it was working earlier a little bit. But yeah, this will drive me nuts. There's absolutely nothing I can do. So that's a bit lousy. That is unfortunate. Now, I'm putting on my Harley Davidson gloves, which I know are particularly bad. And you will see they still work. Everything still works perfectly on the Zumo. So the Zumo wins on touch, there's no question. Everything is just cool. Um, come over here. No, nope, nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I got something, but I had to like push it five times, which will kill me if I have to deal with that. So let's just see. Okay. No. 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 Still, it is. Come on, man. That is. Oh, hang on. So something happened. There we go. So maybe the middle of the thumb. Okay. So that doesn't do anything. Press. Oh. Oh, no, no. Okay, so, so okay, that's not great, but I've figured it out. You've got to use the middle of your thumb, not the tump tips, or so that's. But that is going to still be very irritating. So this is going to be interesting. Bye. Let me just start. Okay, I've jury rigged up the unit just onto my handlebar um, next to where my uh, my quad lock would go just for now because it's quite a palaver to take off the other thing and um, put on my helmet turned on the, the cardo turned on the bike which by the way I've got a jerry rigged system here going to my battery tender which is perfect for USB for testing and uh, it all popped up and uh, CarPlay popped up on its own automatically so encouragingly I haven't done anything but turn things on and I'm already getting messages from WhatsApp and messages from work flowing through into my into my headset so this is a game changer for me it's awesome I hate using my phone for that type of thing it just doesn't do the job anyway it's also a nice bright sunny day and so I'm really keen to see how the Sun affects the display one other thing I have found out is that if I use specific gloves for displays it does work so these are my alpine stars that i normally use for racing and look it works quite well um, i would say it's it's probably not as good as um as uh the, the zumo 
but I mean it's really quite snappy I'm quite happy with it I'll be honest let me go to Osm and it's just going on the tip so so obviously <laughs> purpose-built gloves work fine <sighs> it is it is annoying um, that I'm gonna have to s get rid of all my gloves if I want to use it or use these I don't like these gloves they're uncomfortable Alpine stars are for racing um, so yeah that is a pity but let's go so there's there's the two units side by side uh, do I want this cable lying around under my leg no I will rather sit on it keep it out of the way that's fine okay and let's go for a little ride see what happens I mean there's nothing much to see it is just CarPlay or uh, Android Auto but um, in the Sun of course now as I leave the Sun has stopped um, look one thing that's immediately unfair on the Zumo is the Zumo is pointing directly at the sky where this is pointing upright so if I was gonna really give them a fair comparison I should do that good thing to look at the road Stuart okay so now they're both getting exactly the same treatment and um, yeah this one is now a little bit in the shade <laughs> so I can't win I can't really get a if I just do that then I'm actually looking it looks it looks great uh, I'll be honest with you the displays look identical so well done carper ride you've managed to what appears to replicate the uh, the visual experience and the number of nits or whatever they are um, of the Zumo what a pleasure what an absolute pleasure and I can play my music I can respond to emails and texts watch a video whilst riding of course not would not do that now I haven't actually got any navigation set up so let's see if I can do that via um, okay Google hey Google hey Google okay Google it's not hearing me navigate to work okay so that's that's cool it looks like it doesn't just respond automatically to my voice like it used to I had to push the little voice button which is interesting but at least it worked when I pushed the button I hate shouting in the in the windscreen or in the wind and it's not hearing me able to get frustrated so I'm quite happy just to push that button get a bling and then talk people um, assuming that this finger can also work let's just see no these gloves are only lit right hand yeah I oh, know there we go navigate to Woodford okay They're a little risky I prefer to say okay Google I'll have a look and see whether that's a path to a feature actually in the Android Auto not sure that's worth considering is um, if I had my phone sitting over here it would be and I was using the map it would be draining the battery on on the phone so you'd have to have a second power cable um, and I've done it in the past I've had power cables that like run USB uh, and that's fine however um, I actually would like to remove the phone from the bike uh, although I've got the dampening thing I have a very expensive phone I don't want to damage the phone I don't like the phone uh, being exposed to rain even though it's waterproof um, and the dust I just would prefer the phone to be in my pocket safe and sound so that's what this does it gives me my phone in my pocket safe and sound and I probably don't need to charge it because the display is off this display is being charged so um, obviously I will come back and and test all of this on a, my next trip which is planned for a couple of weeks time and uh, just assess how long a fully charged phone will last um, because the phone will be on the whole day look my phone's my phone's always on um, but, but uh, if I am navigating with it it burns down quite quickly so let's see how long it lasts so in a few weeks time I will do a more comprehensive uh, review but for now good grief for the price that I paid um, which I think was 209 US dollars uh, which was 
not very much at all. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the US dollar figure is uh, for um, the Zumo. I will, I will put it on the screen so as a comparison what I may have already in the beginning. I just, uh, I just think um, if it's significantly cheaper, uh, it's a winner and it solves some of the problems that the, that the Zumo already has. So perhaps the days of uh, dedicated brand uh, GPS is, is actually over. You know, they had a resurgence when people realized their phones were quite valuable things to put on their bikes. But now with CarPlay and Android Auto, different story altogether. A bite to eat has been had. I'm just putting on my helmet and then I'm going to walk back to the bike. I did quickly look at my phone to confirm nothing is connected to it, which it isn't. Okay, let's go and see. Back on. Equivalently, I will do this for now. Okay. And I'll sit on the bike and I will thread it. So I'm sitting on it. Okay. Okay, it's connected already. It says the sound. I can hear it through my cardo right away. Um, it's not automatically starting Android Auto, which I thought it might. I thought that was the setting. Not sure. We shall oh, it has. Yeah, it just took a few seconds to start up Android Auto, and it has started it. So <laughs> my phone is off. Not not off. It's locked. So something else I've answered the question is I do not have to unlock my phone for all of this to work. Given I've never used Android Auto before, you might all be rolling around laughing. Uh, how come I don't know this stuff? Oh, no. This is why I don't like these gloves. <laughs> Okay, what a drama. Okay, and uh, let me just confirm that it all works completely fine. Uh, tell you what, let's use um, let's use the other mapping tool on the way back, Osband, and I'll try. Navigate to home. Guessing direction. The trip is 11 kilometers. Time is 11 minutes. Okay. What's nice is that when I asked it to navigate, it realized that the the mapping app that was up in center was Osmand and not Google Maps. I was expecting it to assume Google Maps and it would switch over to Google Maps, which it didn't. So that's a, that's a, another good sign, but again, that's another Android Auto feature. And okay, so I've got my windshield, sorry, my visor down, and it's a, um, it's a shaded visor, so um, for UV, so it's like sunglasses. And so therefore it makes everything slightly darker and still looking at the two I see no discernible difference in brightness To say I am impressed um, I mean, I'm stacking it up against possibly one of the best systems out there. Admittedly, there's now the X-T2, but the X-T2 is pretty much the same. It's just bigger uh, and maybe have one or two extra features. I'm not sure. But I mean, this is a, this is a world-class navigation device and I kind of prefer, prefer this one. The only, the only area where it is beaten hands down is the touch screen obviously and I suppose that that contributes to the price difference as well but anyway well done copyright I like it I am going to use you from now on and I shall be selling my XT